So we've got some good metal going on the Camaro now. We got the cowl done, we got the dash top replaced, and we've gotten the doors knocked out. It's time to tackle the floor. When I bought this thing, it was a total Flintstone mobile. There was no floor to be seen. AMD hooked us up with a full floor pan, and we're gonna get this project tackled. The first thing I gotta do is cut out the old floor pan. We're gonna start with the VersaCut 40, and then I gotta go back and drill all the spot welds. All 372 spot welds. To get this floor cut out, I'm going to use my VersaCut 40. This plasma cutter is great for cutting thin sheet metal and heavy 3 8 plate. It'll cut painted metal, rusty metal, it just doesn't care, it gets the job done. I'm going to cut the floor out in sections and anywhere I have a spot welded seam, I'm going to leave about an inch flange so that I can come back later and pry off. Here's a tech tip so you don't get any sparks to the face. Cutting through rusty metal will tend to wear your consumables quicker than clean metal, so make sure you have a consumable kit on hand to keep your cuts clean. Yeah, it looks pretty good with a floor out. Yeah, it's amazing. The more I cut off this car, the better it looks. Yes, this car definitely looks better with less, especially without the front end. Yep. So uh, so what are you working on? Well, I cut the floor out last week. Yeah. I got all the uh, spot welds now. I have to drill them out. So I got to go around this whole perimeter here. Oh, because we got the last, when we cut it out, we left We left the about an inch, yeah. So we got to cut, cut it out on that seam. Oh, that's, uh, that's cool. That looks like a fun job. Yeah, a lot of fun. So when you get that out, though, we're putting the AMD sheet metal and we got the whole floor pan. Yep, we got a whole floor pan. Now, we're not going to use all of it. We're actually going to seam it right about here. Okay. And what that's going to allow us to do is keep the location of the factory shackle hangers. It's going to keep the seat where it was, and it'll just help me locate this floor. This is my first yeah. full floor replacement, so I think this will help me. Yeah. Get it set up. And that looks like pretty good metal. The yeah. More, the more reference points you have, the better. It's interesting. The further back on this car you get, actually, the better the sheet metal really? is. Besides yeah, yeah. the floor. Because up there, you're saying up there it looks pretty rough. Yeah, I got some work to do up here. So you're actually going to replace uh, the kickboards yourself then? Yeah, I'm going to have to make these tow kickboards. AMD does have them, but they have them as little patch panels or you can get the whole firewall. Okay. So you're just going to so you're going to use that as a reference point. Put the put the AMD sheet metal in and then cut that out and just do that little piece yourself. Yeah, I'll just make those patch panels after the floor is in. Well, looks like fun. Well, putting the sheet metal in is going to be fun. The, yeah. Uh, the spot welds looks like it's a it's a real nightmare actually drilling them out. I got some time ahead of me. All right. Well, let me know when you're done with that and I'll come help you put the new clean sheet metal in. Yeah, I'll need a hand. All right. Be patient and take your time when you're cutting out spot welds. The last thing you want to do is damage good metal you don't intend on replacing. So I know I said I was going to keep the floor in the back, but the more poking around I did, I found a lot of holes. And rather than just patch some stuff here and there, I figured I got the full AMD floor pan I might as well spend some time and do it right. It is the Eastwood motto, and it, a little more time here, it's gonna save me a lot of time and frustration years down the road. Wow, that looked like fun. That is a lot of spot welds. Yeah, it took a while. A couple spot weld bits, some grinding <laughs> wheels, a lot of belt sander. That new belt sander we have works awesome. That little skinny, yeah, yeah, I didn't realize that's what it was for, but Bob out in the store said he loves it for spot welds, and I guess he was right. Yeah, but now that the floor's out, I gotta blast this hole inside. I know I'm gonna have to patch that inner rocker over there. Yeah. I think I got some patching to do over here as well. But I'm going to hold off from the tow board until the floor's in. That trans tunnel will locate the floor. 
and then I'll just be able to make the new patch right to the floor. Okay, and you got the whole, the whole big AMD, the entire yep. floor. Should yeah, fit I, right in. Yeah, once I test fit it, I'm, I know it's going to fit awesome. So after it's in, you're actually going to build those patches off to match the new. Yeah, I'll use our bead board. roller and make new patches for the tow boards. I have good metal up there on the firewall, so. So uh, now it's time to start blasting. Yeah, let's get started. Sounds like fun. Let's go. Mr. Eastwood guy. Mr. Eastwood guy. Yeah. Do you need any help? Nah, nah. Great job welding today. Thanks. I've never seen someone use a paint gun like that before. Yeah, yeah. And the powder coating was amazing. Uh-huh. You want my light? No, really. Take it. Okay. Wow. Hey, kid. Catch. Wow. Thanks, Eastwood guy. Are you gonna give me the f***ing light? You guys have seen me use a lot of different methods to strip paint and rust on this Camaro, and this time we're gonna use blasting. We've got a lot of rust to remove, and blasting's gonna get the job done efficiently, and it's gonna give me nice clean metal to work from. Today we're gonna be using our ALC 110 pound pressure blaster, and you can't beat this thing. It's made in the USA, and it's gonna get the job done right. To start blasting, you're going to want to first strain your media to make sure there's any big chunks or contaminants they're taken out, and then you're going to want a good source of clean, dry air. Today we're going to be using our scroll compressor. This scroll compressor is a prototype that our in-house R&D team has been testing over the last few months to make sure it's going to give you the best performance. One thing about blasting is you actually find out how much work you have left to do, which in my case is a lot. I actually exposed some new holes that I didn't even know existed. So we finished up blasting the car, and now I know what I'm working with. I got some nice solid metal on the back on the inner rocker, but the front I definitely have to patch up. I'm going to use some 16 and 18 gauge and really make this thing solid. With my inner rocker cut open, I found out I actually had to replace a little bit more metal. The inside support structure was rotted out and compromised, and it just had to be replaced. Just like we've talked about in previous episodes, I started with a paper template, and then I transferred it to metal. To cut this patch out, I used our electric shears. We're working with 16 gauge here, and it's just too thick to really use tin snips. This panel required two simple bends using the brake. Once it was ready to go, I made a test fit to make sure it was just right. And then I got some self-etch weld through primer on it. This self-etch weld through primer is going to give me corrosion resistance. And I had to get that on the panel now because once it's installed, I'm not going to be able to get to the backside. Whenever I'm working on the Camaro, I always like to test our new R&D products. Here you can see me trying out a prototype of our new Rust Encapsulator Platinum. This is going to give more corrosion protection and more strength than our regular Rust Encapsulator. As you can see, I went a little overboard and hit a bunch of spots. The good thing is, the stuff works. For good measure and extra security, I applied our liquid metal adhesive to our patch on the inside of the rocker as well as the back of the panel. You can see here, I used Clecos to lock the panel into place. This is going to make sure that the panel adhesive can do its job and also secure the panel nice and tight for the plug welds I need to make. With the driver's side inner structure all welded into place, I repeated the same process on the passenger side. Now 
The inner rockers have some slight shape to them, and I wanted to get the new patches as close to original as possible. I used some thick cardboard stock to make my template and get the shape just right, and then I transferred it to some 16 gauge metal. Again, I used the VersaBend to make the patch, and with some grinding, test fitting, and a little tweaking, I was able to get it just right and weld it in. Like any other patch, when you're welding it in, make sure you bounce around. This is going to minimize warping and excess heat going into the panel and give you a better result. Here's a quick tech tip. Make sure you grind the welds down now. You're not going to be able to get to them when that floor is in. I repeated the process on the other side, got that inner rocker all fixed up, and I was ready to tackle my last couple patches before the floor goes in. So I got these inner rockers all done, and it's time to get this floor in. But before I do that, guess what guys? I got two more patches. When I took out the old floor, I actually ended up tearing two tabs off the rear frame rails. So I gotta get those made up again and attached, and we'll be able to get this floor in for good. It's time to start prepping this floor so I can get it welded in. You guys saw me drill about 300 spot welds to get the old floor out. Well, I gotta make provisions for new spot welds. I'm gonna use our pneumatic punch flange tool as well as our metal hand punch. The metal hand punch is kinda unique because it has a deeper throat. It's gonna allow me to get higher up on the flange and give me a little more metal to weld around. I punched as many holes as I could with the pneumatic punch flange tool along the frame rails. When you're doing a new floor pan like this, you want to make sure that everything is nice and tight and you have plenty of places to make a nice clean spot weld. The metal hand punch tool has a variety of different die configurations that allows you to do 8th inch to 7 16th inch punches in up to 16 gauge metal. It also has a nice backstop to have a consistent depth for your hole punches and it has a deeper throat than most others. To help get this floor in place, I had to call in some muscle. Randy was there once again, and we slid the floor in from the bottom. In order to accurately locate the front of this floor, I had to use a plumb bob. This plumb bob allows me to make a reference mark on the roof of the car and locate the floor. I had made some reference marks before I cut the old floor out so I knew exactly where the subframe mounts were. With this new floor in, I just had to match them up and we were ready to weld this thing in place. The best part about punching 300 holes in an AMD floor is you get to weld all 300 holes shut. I don't know if I was the best welder before this, but I know I'm going to get better by the end of this. When you're welding a flange or seam together, do yourself a favor and get a set of our spot weld pliers. These are going to let you compress the metal tight against each other and ensure you get a good strong weld each time. Like we had talked about earlier, the key to a good strong floor is good panel fitment. I was able to use clamps along the inner rocker and floor seam to get that nice and tight, but here at the inner frame rail, there's no way I can get a clamp in. So the only way I'm going to get these two panels tight is to actually drill a hole, run a bolt, and tighten it down. Once I have those nice and tight, I'll be able to weld it all up. Cody! Hey, Randy. Yo, buddy, I found one of your uh, body mount grommets laying in front of the car over there. I was going to reuse that. <laughs> Yo, dude, what's up? I go away for five, six months, and all of a sudden you got a floor pan in this thing? Yeah, it looks good. No, nah, I mean, seriously, though. I mean, this thing went in quicker than I thought. This is, a, this is quite the project. I mean, 
This AMD sheet metal looks great. Yeah, I mean, the hardest part was getting the old floor out and getting all those spot welds cut. So, so what's next here? So now I've got to replicate this tow board, but I'm not going to be able to exactly duplicate it due to the speed profile. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to do something custom with some vertical beads, but I'm going to use a new bead roller. Oh, a new one? Like a yeah. prototype? Yep. Cool. Are you going to need me to crank it? I won't. That's what? the cool thing. I can use it by myself. I, I feel like you guys are trying to get rid of me. Like, I'm going to be obsolete here soon. It's very possible. Ah. All right. Well, then I'll let you go. <laughs> if you need any help, though, you know, let me know. I shouldn't. <laughs>